Okay, hi everyone. Thank you for watching. Here today I'm going to just do the installation of VMware vCenter Multi Hypervisor Manager Server. So if you go to the VMware website, you'll be able to download two of the setup files. One is the server, while the other one is just the plugin. So the plugin can be installed on any of the vSphere client. So in this case, we just need to install on the server binaries. And of course, uh, for the client, you can actually install via the plugin uh, tab in the vCenter client. And here I'm just going to show you that in our vSphere client, the multi hypervisor server is not installed. It's supposed to appear in the inventory section. Okay, before we start, um, we need to create a service account. So in this case, I'm just going to use my built in administrator account. This can be found under the local policies, local security user right assignment and log on as a service. So you can see I actually added in the uh, built-in administrator. So any of your uh, accounts which is listed inside here can be used. Um, you will need that uh, to actually install the multi-hypervisor manager. So uh, you can add in other account groups uh, to be placed here, maybe a service account or object group. Alright. So here we will start with the installation. Okay, this is pretty fast. Um, just have to um, click next, accept the license, and just fill in a few credentials. So here we just click next, accept the license. So here you can actually generate a default cert or provide a cert later. We're going to provide the cert later, yeah, you will just overwrite your certificates later on in the file folder and uh, start the service yours, uh, in the services later on. All right, It will not be started automatically. So here I'm just going to use a uh, auto-generated. So first we're locating the IP address uh, of your vCenter server or the host name and the username and password that will access the vCenter, has the rights to access the vCenter. And once it's validated, you'll be presented with this screen. Just accept the license, click next. So here you actually provide the service account. Uh, I'm going to use local, so I'm going to use dot forward slash uh, local uh, user. Uh, for domain, you can just uh, specify the domain. And here um, you see the ports, uh, the recommended FQDN to be used. Uh, I will just accept the default and install. It should not take too long. All right. So we open. Uh, you can also install the client. If not, uh, you can install it through the plugin. So I'm just going to open the vSphere client here. And you will see that it's not yet shown, so we just need to go to plugin and manage plugin. And here you will see that what's available is the multi hypervisor manager. So we just click install. This is actually running the client installation file. So we just accept, finish it. You will actually just go up and show as enable. So let's close it and um, you see the icon has now been popped up. So clicking on it. You see an error message here. Okay, there's a caveat to this. So I'm just gonna explain to you. I'm actually logged in using a domain user, alright, which apparently happens to be the domain administrator. So what I'm gonna use here now is gonna use the built-in administrator. 
to access the vSphere client. The reason you are seeing this error is because during the installation for the vCenter credential, I actually use a local built-in administrator. So only the local built-in administrator would have the MHM permissions. Right now, let's go into the MHM again. And you see that all the tabs are now provided. Apparently, um, you need to add the roles. The default only enables the built-in administrator. So you need to use the built-in administrator to add in the other uh, user group. So here I'm going to select the domain and add in the domain administrator into the administrator groups. So once that is done, uh, now my domain admin will have the right to actually use the MHM. So here I'm going to just add in my Hyper-V machine. Let me go to UIP as I didn't join to the domain. Okay, so you can't connect. So simply what you have to do is uh, to go to the uh, Hyper-V machine and you need to run a command all right, to allow HTTP connection and just uh, choose yes this is all shown in the um, documentation all right, as well as the release notes and this time round we will be able to connect this successfully for HTTPS connections uh, you can also refer to the installation guide so here you can see, I'm just going to click OK and I can see that there's one VM already there, which I already configured. So there's a C and D data store, where D is all my VMs, uh, C is my OS. So once this is added, you will see it being uh, activated and you will be able to see the VM. So the basic summary and stuff, um, you'll be able to edit some settings. I'm still pretty used to the vSphere client, this looks more cleaner. Okay. And um, we can look at the tasks and permissions here. You'll propagate, so everything's just going to be the same, just like a normal vSphere client. So if you click on the host, you'll be able to see all the VMs under configurations. Uh, you can see the summary of processor memory. And in terms of network, it will show you the typical networking, just like our normal vSphere environment. All right, same thing. So here I'm going to create a new VM, specify a name. And you can actually specify a location. So in my case, it's C and D. So you can specify the location. Alright, uh, define memory, choose the network. Um, I'm going to use a network adapter instead of the legacy ones. Choose a virtual network. Create a disk, and I'm just going to call, put this about 10 gig. Um, I'm going to use dynamic. And I click next, I do not have enough space left on my C drive because default goes to C. Alright, so I need to specify this, so I'm not going to do this, I'm going to click no. So what I'm going to do is specify data store, in this case I'm going to just put D drive. So the this will actually be provisioned on the disk, so I'm going to insert the CD-ROM. So here I'm going to use the Hyper-V holds uh, CD-ROM, in this case. Alright, unless you have an ISO path. So my Hyper-V drive is uh, E. I'm just going to click finished. So note, um, by specifying only the drive letter, you'll be on the root itself unless you specify a folder. So I'll show it to you later on. So now we go to the vSphere client um, and uh, look for the Hyper-V machine, uh, which is also a VM here, which I have enabled the hardware uh, as virtualization uh, feature. Let me attach uh, the CD-ROM with our Windows XP ISO. So let's just power on this machine. Um, the setting to say that there is no console view, so you can actually see that. Um, so we are unable to do any installation directly. We can only power on the VM. And under the vSphere inventory, you will not also see this VM since they are not configured with VMware tools, we are unable to see the console. So um, it won't be listed in the same list. So here we click on the Hyper-V machine. Let's open up the Hyper-V manager.
Let's just double check that uh, the machine is actually created uh, and power on referring to the CV ROM. And here you can see that it's actually there. Alright, the installation uh, is actually moving, uh, booted up from the CD ROM. Okay, so if you want to use HTTPS or uh, connections, then you need to install the IIS uh, manager on the Hyper-V machines and uh, create the cell cert and also uh, use the command uh, to actually activate the uh, HTTPS uh, certification cell site connections. Right, I didn't go through that, um, so you can actually refer to this document. Right, that's all for the vCenter multi hypervisor manager. So here I'm just going to show you where these are created. So previously we only put D drive, so you actually appear on the D. So you can see the VHD file is now in the D drive. Right, that's all for the vCenter multi hypervisor manager.